So let's have a look at the limiting factors of photosynthesis. So you need to be able to explain how each factor affects photosynthesis. You need to be able to describe and explain graphs showing how factors affect photosynthesis and explain why they're described as limiting. We just take a look at the equation for photosynthesis and see if you can spot the mistake in this. Um, so we've got the word equation, which is carbon dioxide plus water. Um, that needs to be in the presence of light energy, which is absorbed by chlorophyll, which is contained in chloroplasts. And that makes glucose and oxygen. So below you've got a supposedly balanced equation. So if you remember that I've taught you 666 is the really evil number. We're going to leave um, the glucose equation al um, formula sorry, alone because it's got enough numbers, except for that O2 there should be an O6. So there should be O6, small little 6. Okay, so if we have a look at this graph, this graph is showing us on the x-axis the light intensity and on the y-axis it's showing us the rate of photosynthesis. So you can see from this graph that carbon dioxide concentration has an impact on photosynthesis as well as light intensity, as you would expect because both of them are required for photosynthesis. So you can see that if you increase the carbon dioxide concentration, then the rate of photosynthesis goes up. But you can also see that um, even if the plant has got quite a lot of light available to it or the light intensity is high, so that might be at midday or during summer, um, if there's not enough carbon dioxide available, the plant won't have a high photosynthesis rate. Um, whereas if it's got a higher concentration, then it will. So a limiting factor is part of the photosynthesis reaction that is in short supply which prevents the rate of photosynthesis increasing any further so it's a bit like all or nothing it can't have one of those factors missing and then continue to increase the rate so if we have a look at each graph in turn so um, if you have a look at the shape of this graph it should be familiar because it is very similar um, if not exactly the same as um, an enzyme graph so we've got temperature along the bottom. So this temperature here um, is the optimum. And that's why you've got the peak. So that's the optimum temperature for photosynthesis. But you can see at this point here that the rate of photosynthesis begins to decrease. So we can have a look at this graph by labeling it one, two, and three. So if you had to describe the graph, you would, you would have some values along the bottom. But if you had to describe the graph at this point, you'd be saying from this temperature to this temperature, the rate of photosynthesis is increasing because the line goes up. Then you would say at this temperature, the line peaks, and that that um, is the optimum. And then you would say between, let me change my pen, between this temperature and this temperature, the line goes down, so the rate of photosynthesis decreases. So that would be describing the shape of the graph. But then you have to be able to explain it as well. So we just get rid of all those annotations. It's a bit less busy. So at one, what is happening is, um, as the temperature increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases. That's the relationship that it's showing. And the reason for that is because, as you know, that um, if you've got more um, heat energy, then you've got more kinetic energy, so there'll be more collisions between um, the carbon dioxide and the water. Um, then you get to a point two where that is the optimum rate of photosynthesis and that's the ideal temperature to make the maximum amount of product and then at three you'll notice that it begins to decline and that's because the temperature is becoming too high and when the temperature becomes high the enzymes that are involved in photosynthesis begin to denature that means that their active site changes shape and the substrate will no longer fit and that will decrease the rate of photosynthesis so it's very important that you remember that photosynthesis is controlled by enzymes. Okay, the next graph shows carbon dioxide concentration. So 
along the bottom of the graph, the x-axis, you've got increase. That's why the arrow's there, because it's increasing carbon dioxide concentration. So this is a low concentration, and this is a high concentration. And then on the y-axis, again, you've got the rate. So you've got a high rate of photosynthesis, and well, non-existent right at the point where the axes cross. So you can see to start off with, which would be number one, as carbon dioxide increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases. Then what happens is you've got a plateau with the graph there. So the rate of photosynthesis here is staying the same. It's not increasing anymore, but it's not going down. And that's because something else is limiting the rate of photosynthesis. It's not carbon dioxide. And then you'll see the same relationship on the light intensity one. So you'll see that as light intensity increases, so does the rate of photosynthesis. But then it begins to level off or plateau. And that means that the rate is neither increasing or falling, which means that another factor is responsible because it's a limiting factor. So remember, any factor that's in short supply will affect the rate of photosynthesis. It's not light intensity because you've been shown here that light intensity is increasing. So it has to be one of the others. So you can have a go now at providing an explanation for the shape of this graph. So you've got um, the final factor that affects photosynthesis, water availability, and then the rate of photosynthesis. So you can pause the video and have a go at writing an explanation for the graph. And what you should have is, as more water becomes available, the rate of photosynthesis increases. The graph levels off because although water is available, one of the other factors must be limiting photosynthesis. This could be light intensity or the concentration of carbon dioxide. What you have to remember about this point here is your question might give you some clues. So if your question says that it is a bright sunny day and you get the water availability graph, then you know that the water is available and you know that it's bright and sunny, so light intensity is probably okay as well. So the limiting factor would be carbon dioxide concentration. So you need to remember to read the question. Read the question, then read your answer, then read the question again.